jobs help you in. And I'm going to reference some scriptures so we can understand what's going on. Uh, because I want you to understand the Bible as clear as possible. I am uh, just been in the Word all day. So I'm kind of fired up. You guys ready? You're chapter 8? When you get to chapter 8, say amen. amen. Okay, that worked. Okay. It said, but Jesus went to Mount, it said, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now, when Jesus returned, where is he going to return to? The Mount of Olives, okay? Now listen, he says, at dawn he appeared in the temple, uh, in the temple court. At dawn, meaning the break of day or in the morning, uh, uh, at the temple court, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down and taught them. Okay? Now, um, when Jesus returns, one of the things in Deuteronomy is, he's going to sit everyone down, and he's going to teach them Torah. He's going to teach them the word of God. When he returns to Mount of Olives, the people, he's going to sit that the people down and he's going to teach them Torah and why he is Messiah. Okay? So, when he's saying this here, um, who the Bible says uh, in the morning? Let's see. Because mine says at the break of dawn, Okay, early in the morning. Now, I was teaching you guys last time. Whenever the Bible says early in the morning, it's a prophecy concerning the end times. Okay? Because joy comes in the morning. Joy will not come until Christ returns. Christ returns in the morning. Okay? In the morning on the sixth day, on the, in the morning on the sixth day, uh, Christ, at the end of the as on the morning at the end of the sixth day, Christ returns. Because days begin in the evening, right? And they end in the morning. So at the end of the sixth day, in the morning, Christ will return. Uh, I'm trying to find that scripture. Let's see, I think it's, um, yeah, Deuteronomy chapter 33. Here, let's go there real fast. And uh, I'm going to try to. Deuteronomy 33. We're going to go back to John 8. But I just want to show you guys something. Okay, now, the time that, that, that uh, Jesus Christ in chapter 8 is really at the time of tabernacle where everybody is supposed to be rejoicing. It's kind of a funny thing because while, while everybody's supposed to be rejoicing, these guys are trying to set this woman up to get her killed or stoned for adultery. But in Deuteronomy chapter 33, it says, um, This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God. Now this is the scripture they read at tabernacle, okay? So it says, this is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on, uh, uh, on the Israelites before his death. He said, the Lord came from Sinai and dawned, um, and, and dawned over them from Sair. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with, who did he come with? What does it say? A, a maraud of holy ones. Who, who says uh, uh, saints? Does your, everybody's Bible says a maraud of holy ones? Okay. So he comes back. So this is a prophecy of the end. That he comes with a maraud of holy ones from the south and from the mount of uh, uh, from the mountain slope. Surely it is you who, who loves the people. All the holy ones are in your hands. At your feet they all bow down 
and from you receive instructions. Um, the law uh, that Moses gave us. So when he returns, okay, with all of his holy ones, he says at his feet, they're going to sit down and he's going to teach them the instructions or the Torah and the understanding of Scripture. So this is all chapter 33, what Jesus Christ is about to read them when he says they sat down at his feet. He's about to read, they read on tabernacles, Deuteronomy chapter 33, which is a prophecy about the end time, about when he returns, okay? So, let's go back to John. You guys stay at John. I'm not going to have you leave John anymore. Uh, but I wanted to show you, and I want you to read Deuteronomy chapter 33, and you'll see that the whole thing is talking about the end, when God, when Jesus Christ is anointing uh, all of the tribes of Israel and he's blessing them because he's returned and he's rescued them. That's what Deuteronomy chapter 33. Well, in chapter 8, this is what he's about to read and now give them instructions on, on the blessings of each tribe. Okay. It says, the teacher of the law, in verse 3, chapter 8, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, a teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They were using this, uh, this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. Because as soon as he says, you don't, have, don't stone her, they're going to say, okay, you're not keeping the law. Now, I, I want to show you something here because Jesus knows the law, so he's going to go through this whole thing afterward only because he knows the law. Um, I'm going to read Deuteronomy 19, okay? You don't have to go there, but write it down. Deuteronomy 19, verse 16 through, through, uh, through 19. It says, if a malicious witness takes the stand to accuse a man of a crime, the two men involved uh, in the dispute must stand in the presence of the Lord before the priests and the, and the judges who are in office at the time. The judge must make a thorough investigation. So if they brought this woman to Jesus, you know what he has to do? He, make, he has to make a thorough investigation. And if the witnesses prove to be liars, giving false testimony against his brother, then do to him as he intended to do to his brother. You must purge the evil from among you. So do you see what's going on here? Now, if they're, if they're accusing her and they're wrong, they know Torah. And they understand that Jesus is going to make a thorough investigation. And once he makes a thorough investigation, if they've been found to be liars, they will be the ones that get stoned, not her, okay? So now Jesus is going to start kind of uh, investigating this whole thing. So, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10, you don't have to go there, but please write it down. Or put it right next to the scripture where they're accusing the woman. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10 says, if a man commits adultery with uh, another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. So now, who have they brought before Jesus? Only one, okay? So now, as Jesus is doing an investigation, one thing he's going to say is, okay, if you found her in the very act, 
Where's the man? 